everyone can hear me. Marcy, can you please just confirm? Yep. I, I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you great. Perfect. It looks like there's no delay now. Yay. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. This is Mel Balsamo with Cadaver Software. I've been an InfoPath Forms developer for four years now. And for today's webinar, I'll be your presenter. Today is October 11th, 2012. And today's topic will be about using InfoPath email forms to communicate with external users. Okay, and um, if, any, if, anyone have, um, if anyone has questions, feel free to post it in the questions board and we'll get to them later at the end of this webinar. Okay, you know the goals, um, most of you have been attending our weekly webinars and um, we value your I think I just got muted there for some reason, but hopefully you can hear me again. Um, yeah, the webinar goals, we've had the same goals ever since. We are human, we're real, so we commit mistakes like this, go to webinars, um, we're using this for the first time, and we're like an experimenting, so please bear with us. All right. For the value propositions, um, you know, this topic, why this topic? There is sometimes a need to have a form that works differently for public, um, which is for external users, versus private internal use, right? So as an example, um, you might want to make a simple form to be sent out via email or downloaded from a website and submits back to you via email. This could be a survey form, an order form, or a sign-up form, or what have you. But once you get it back, you want to have more functionality available to you, including the ability to submit to an internal database or to a SharePoint site or a library, right? And we want to make sure that form data in all locations, both the public and the private locations, are always in sync. Okay. And of course, we, we have some requirements there is InfoPath. InfoPath is required. You can do, uh, you can use 2007 or 2010. Outlook is required for sending emails, um, 2007 or 2010 as well. And of course, SharePoint where you're going to like store your, all your forms, upload all your forms. If you don't have a SharePoint site, I, um, I believe a SQL database will do too. Okay. Um, email forms, split versions. In essence, you have two separate forms, right? One for public consumption and one for private. These can have different security modes. The public form can be restricted. It can have a restricted security, while the private form can be domain or full trust. The private version may contain some additional controls that will allow you to do more with your forms, such as submitting them to a SharePoint document library, which we're going to demo in a, in a second here. And for this to work, InfoPath needs to consider these two forms one and the same. Again, we're going to look at how we, we are going to do this. Okay. So one and the same. How are we going to do that? We're going to do that via the InfoPath form template ID. Okay, in the form template properties dialog box, if you open your form in the InfoPath designer, you're going to see the name, ID, and the description. The ID is used to determine which template a form will be opened with. But this ID is dynamic, like it keeps changing as the name changes. You know, when you do, when you go to file and you click save as and you give it a different name, it's going to change the ID. Whenever the name changes, this ID changes too. Yeah, but if you publish the form, like when you publish it to a network location or a SharePoint server or what have you, it doesn't affect the name and the ID. The key is that both forms have the same ID, the public and the private versions, they should have the same ID. And after you've created both versions of your form, you will tell InfoPath that they are the same form by just 
yeah, setting both of their IDs to the same value. And in this demo, we're going to use the name email form, and it's going to use that in the ID as well. And you're going to understand all this. You're going to have a better, clearer understanding of this later during the demo. And aside from setting the ID, making these two forms one and the same by, you know, manipulating the ID, we're going to manipulate the form versions as well. We will set the private form to have a higher form version number than the public form. Notice the difference between the versions. Okay, we need to ensure that the private form version has a higher number by updating it for, from example, 1.0, 0.0. Point X. This can be a number like this to make it like one year. You can also do 2.0 point zero point something. But yeah, yeah, you get you get what I mean. <laughs> um, this will you know why do we have to do this? This will ensure that your private form is always new, newer than the public form. And InfoPath, whenever you open a form, whether it be public or the private, it will consider the higher version. Again, it will upgrade what's going to happen here in this scenario is it's going to upgrade the public form to the private form because this one has a newer version. And I'm going to show you in the next slide the diagram of what we're trying to accomplish. Okay, see the internal user, for example, an admin, this one, the desk admin, sends the public form out via email or you can also post it somewhere for download. But right now we're doing email. And then when the user submits the form via email, the, um, sorry, the user will, sub will receive the form from, this, from his email and then will open it with a, um, with a form template, the email form public version template. Then he will fill it out and submit it back to the desk admin. When the user submits via email, the admin will click the open form button at the top of the Outlook message, and you'll see that in a while, which will open the form using the internal, the private version of the template on the desk admin's machine. Okay, you might be presented with dialogues notifying you of a form template conflict. This will occur if both forms are open in a one's machine. Since both have the same ID, you can just simply ignore that message, you know, say, yes to that message and I'll hand the screen sharing over to Marcy later so you can see that and um, know how to get around it. Okay, now the admin then will choose which template to open the form with which um, of course the internal version of the form and then he will submit it, upload it to the SharePoint site. Okay, I have created a SharePoint library and I'm going to show that to you later. And the process can go on and on. Like after submitting it to the SharePoint side, the desk admin will grab it, download it again, do some changes. Let's say we're doing a, an expense report form that the desk admin um, approves and he wants to update, send the updates to the external user, say, hey, I approve this. You, um, you might want to take a look. And the user can just um, receive it via email even if he or she you know is offline if and sorry if I keep talking about offline online private public what I mean by that is offline users or external users that don't actually belong to your network to your for example SharePoint network they are not a member of your SharePoint um, network all right they don't have your SharePoint credentials when they go to your SharePoint site they're not they're gonna get access denied so those are the external users, those are the offline users. And um, the um, off online version, on the other hand, uh, internal users, those are the SharePoint members, network members. Okay. Um, and there is a last item. This is the last item on, the, on today's webinar to topics to configure SharePoint for your, um, SharePoint email for library to automate. And we are not able, we're not going to be able to show you this because uh, we just fall under the limitations. SharePoint Online um, Office 365 does not support email submit, we know this. And we are using, our organization are using hosted 
change and it requires additional work for host exchange. But this is, um, you know, this is really good. What this means is um, you're going to set up your SharePoint library, a SharePoint library, so that um, when an external user submits the form to an email address, the form gets automatically submitted to the SharePoint library. That um, I hope I hope you got that. So instead of the admin opening his email and uh, opening the form and submitting to SharePoint, he's gonna like save that one step, save himself that one step. He's not um, uh, he's not required to open the form from Outlook anymore. Instead, he just go straight to SharePoint and check the form that's submitted directly by the user, and the user. Does not um, this method does not require external users to have SharePoint credential, credentials? They remain external. They remain offline. Okay, and here are some resources on how you can set that up. Again, um, I'm apologizing in advance that I'm not going to be able to show you this, but here are some resources, and you're going to get this um, this uh, slide deck when Morsi sends out the goodies later on. So. Um, this first link here shows you the steps on how you can set up um, mail-enabled document libraries in SharePoint 2010. There are five parts to that. This link shows the other part, so I just um, added that one, the first part. And then the second one, it's just showing you how you can actually configure your SharePoint library to handle that. Okay, and so much for that. I think um, we're ready for the demo. We're going to configure the public version for emailing external users and we're going to do the same for to our private version at the time for us to be able to upload it to SharePoint. Okay, and give me just a sec here while I get my stuff ready. Okay, so you can see my you can see I have two versions of the form here. I will start opening the public email form. I'll open this in the InfoPath Designer. And this is a very simple form. It just has four fields, name, email address, date, and comments, and a submit button. I was going to remove the submit button so that you can see how I can, you know, like start from scratch adding the submit button, but really the What's in it is just it's just a submit button that if I go to submit options, submits to email. If we we'll take a look at the email data connection, it just submits to myself. And actually, why don't I just delete this guy and show you? Um, okay. Okay. So we'll go to the controls pane here. We'll add a button. Right, and you right click on the button and go to button properties. Instead of rules, we're going to say the action would be submit. We'll leave the label as is. That's good enough for us. And then we go to submit options. Um, if Have I not configured this form to submit uh, to email before? This box would have been, you know, disabled, un unchecked. So then this, let's pretend this is the first time I'm checking this. And then I will add an email submit data connection and it, I want users, external users to send the, the form to me after they fill it out. Then I want the subject, I cl I'll click on the FX button here, I want the subject to be a concatenation. If you don't want to type things um, manually, you can go here, insert function, you'll see the um, uh, all the functions that InfoBath has to offer to stuff stock ones and you'll pick concat. Um, so we want to con concatenate the name and the date. And this way we know that it's a unique name since my date is going to be the current date and the current time. The combination of that current time with milliseconds. So that's always going to be unique. And I'm just going to um, insert a hyphen here separate them with the hyphen. I want to copy this. I think it's going to ask me to enter the same thing. 
asking for my form attachment name and yes it does. So when people send me the form back, I want I want the, the form name to be the same. Concatenation of the name and the date. So I just pasted that in and click OK. And I don't want to attach the form template because um, if I attach the form template, the tendency of the user receiving the form template is opening the form template in the designer. And if I say form template, it's the XSM file itself. This one we have open in the designer. Okay, um, it's different from an XML, which is the f actual form that's been filled out. All right, so I don't want to attach the form template. It's not necessary. I just want to see the view of the form on my mailbox. Okay. And since I got an, uh, I already have the first submit there. I'm just going to rename this as email submit. And you can leave all the uh, defaults as they are. But if you want to take a look at that, if I do advanced, it gives me other options here. So show this message if the submission fails. This is good. Um, so users will report that hey, got an, I wasn't able to send you the form. I got an error message, and also a confirmation message if it submitted successfully. And of course, you want to close the form after it gets submitted. So we're done with that. We'll click OK, and OK again. Now I'll double check this. I just want to make sure I set this up correctly. Get okay, email submit too. Okay, cancel. Now, um, I talked about the versioning. Now, let's, let's go to versioning. If you go to File, go to Form Options, you'll see the categories. Look for versioning. And here's what I was talking about before. This should have a lower version number than the private form, than the one um, we're going to use internally. So take note of this version number just as 1.0.0. Whatever. This number can be anything. I'm just going to mute myself for, uh, for a second. Sorry about that. Um, okay. So that's our versioning and security and trust. Again, I talked about making the public email form a restricted version. Why? Because we want to make sure that those external users won't have any access to anything inside our, in, inside our, uh, like our network, our internet, aside from being able to submit this form um, in email. Okay, so we're going to set that as restricted. And it's already set, so I won't click OK. I can do that. Yes, sorry. <laughs> and um, the form template properties, the ID. If you go to File, and um, on this right-hand pane, which most most people don't even know it exists here, um, if you go to Form Template Properties, this is going to show you the name, the ID, and the description. Right now, we're seeing public email form, and it has uh, it has that name and the ID as well. And like I said, we're going to make the public and the private version one and the same. So notice here, if I cancel out of this and I do a file, save as, if I save this as giving it a name, just email form, and click Save. Now if I go back to the form template properties, now it changed the name and the ID here. And this is okay. So we'll retain that. We're not going to do anything with that. We're done with our changes to this form. What I'm going to do next is I'm gonna, I will close it. And I will go to my mailbox. I'll create a new email message that I'll send to Marcy attaching this email form. So this is basically what you're going to send your external users for them to fill out. And we'll look at Marcy's screen later to see what she's doing with it. So this is going to be the email form. Please fill out. I'll send that and I'll pass the sharing over to her.
Okay, can you see my screen, I hope? Let's see, and here's the form. I can't type today. Marcy. So that is the public version or our, of our form and um, let's see. Um, I'm sharing out my screen again. Okay, I think you can see my screen now. Um, I got the form from Mars C and this, this is the one, the latest one. Um, okay, it says public email form and I'm not going to open this yet. It says open form. If I do, if I open this form, what's going to happen? It's going to open with a public email form version because that is the, <coughs> that is the last version I, uh, I saved on my machine, this email form. But I don't want it to open with a public email form. Right. I want it to open with a private version this time and I'll show you this next. I'll open this in the designer. The same but the difference are the buttons. Now I have a SharePoint submit button when in the public version. Um, we only have one button which submits this, uh, the form to me as an admin. But this is my admin form. I am an admin. This is my own form. I want to be able to submit all the forms that I receive from external users to a SharePoint site. At the same time, sometimes there may be times that I want to update forms and I want, it, I want to email them back to the external user. So I, want, I need these buttons. And what do these buttons do? Um, yeah, the word says it all. Uh, the wording say, say it all. This button emails external users, so I'm just submitting to a data connection. The email submit data connection, and it closes the form after. <coughs> Excuse me. SharePoint submit submits to a SharePoint library and closes the form again. If we go to the data, I'll show you the data connections. That are involved. That are um, excuse me involved. This is my SharePoint library submit data connection. It submits to my SharePoint library here that I've set up pre-set up using the same name concatenation of the name hyphen and the date, and it will overwrite the form if it exists. And the email submit will email the form back to the submitter to the external user. So that's why I'm pointing it to the email address field. So whatever email address is in this box right here, it will send it back to that with the same subject. And again, not attaching the form template. Okay, so I'm not going to do that from scratch. Oh, we're just going to do the same thing we did with the private version. Instead, what I will do is we'll take a look at the version in here first. I go to File, Form Options, uh, Versioning. Now you'll notice that my private form has a 1.0.1 as the version number. And this is, uh, this means again, like what I've said before, um, uh, InfoPath will automatically upgrade all email form, all, all forms that have names email form to whichever higher version is stored in my machine. Well, look at security and trust. It's not restricted anymore since I don't, um, it, I don't need to get restricted. I can access my domain. You know, I have all the rights. But of course, um, SharePoint permissions will still be respected. Okay, so what I'll do here is I will go to my folder here and I'll delete this. I don't need this anymore. This is remember the public version. I don't want my info path to get confused. I will delete this. 
and remember we have I have that on my outbox here and I sent it to Marcy. I have this public version on my out uh, on my sent item. So if I ever want to send that to another user, I'll just forward this and we'll attach this public version of content. Okay, if I if I ever lose this XSN so you still have your like your um, original version that you can edit again and save again as an email form. Okay. Um, let's go back to this. I keep switching around. Sorry. So we're back in the private email form. I'm just going to go to File, Form Template Properties, and we'll see that it's named Private Email Form. But then if I save it as Email Form, the same name as I used as my public version, and save it go back to file form template properties it's going to change that so it's basically the same as what Marcy's XML has I can cancel and I can close this I got my changes everything now I'm ready to open Marcy's form okay this is what she filled out for me the public email form and I will click on open form and it did open the private version I can share. I can submit to SharePoint. I can email it back to the user. I'm gonna do SharePoint submit, and this should submit to the SharePoint library that I got this set up with. And this is the one. Right now, you don't see any forms or any documents in this library. And I will wait until this closes, which means it's already submitted. And to those of you who are wondering, I am from the Philippines, so, and our server is in Seattle, so the <laughs> image and the, the distance, hence the it's taking long submitting just that form. Now uh, I will refresh and we'll see that it, I, we have a new form here which is what I just submitted. All right. So then if I as an admin want to take a look at Marcy's form that I just submitted here or make changes to it, I'll just open it from the SharePoint site. We'll open in the InfoPath form client. Um, and it will st still open with a higher version or the private version template because that's still what's saved on my machine and it did open with a private email form version. I will edit this okay, and I will email this back to Marcy and again it used the email address that is in here So I sent that and hopefully Marcy received it. We'll take a look at our screen now. Okay, and here's the email. So I'm going to click this open form button at the top. And we get this uh, dialog box. Yeah, that's, that was the dialog box I was talking about before you simply click yes to that. Okay, so I'm going to make a change and submit it back. There we go. Cool, thank you. And okay. Uh, I got that. Am I presenting again? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so this was the form that I'm seeing questions being posted. I will attend to them shortly here. Okay, thanks. So this was the form that Marcy updated. Um, you can see from the comments changes here, and I'll just open this again. Of course, it will still open with a private email. So it's the same process. I can keep, I can do my changes here. I can email it back to her or just upload it again to SharePoint or what have you. Um, but that's the idea.
of using email forms. Uh, I guess we end the demo there. Any questions? I will open my questions pane. I did see some. Um, where is that guy? Mel, in case, in case you can't see it, um, the question is from Gary, and he says, uh, I trust the external user does not have to have InfoPath client. Is that correct? Now, since we're using InfoPath, actually, even you, if you've noticed, we're opening the forms from InfoPath. It is indeed required. InfoPath needs to be installed in the machines. Um, remember that your users are external users. They won't be able to access your SharePoint site if you're thinking about making your form a browser form. They won't be able to go to your web, um, to your address, SharePoint address, and fill out the form online. So yes, InfoPath client is required for this. I hope that answers your question. Is there anything, any other questions? Okay, I do see now my questions panel now. And let's see. Okay, we have a question from Justin. In your demo today, did you just use the out-of-the-box SharePoint connection to submit, or were you using one of Cadaver tools? In this demo, we don't use any Cadaver tools at all. It's just the stock SharePoint submit data connections. No key rules, no other tools. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> From Robert, can the admin step be removed and the form saved directly back to SharePoint? Um, that's exactly what I was talking about when I, um, on this slide. If I want to go back here real quick, configuring your SharePoint um, library to automate. So this will answer, this will be the answer to your question. All right, you're going to set up your SharePoint library to accept um, email forms. You're going to add an email. Actually, let me show you that link real quick here. Let's open this link. Let's go here. I'd love to show this to you working, but again, it requires additional work setting this up on the kind of exchange we have. Um, okay. So this talks about mo mobile forms, but it's the same as um, like ex users trying to access the forms from, uh, from the field, for example, externally. Using email to submit info path forms to SharePoint. Okay, so you just set this up, email settings, and you actually specify an email address where, like a SharePoint email address, where the forms get submitted to. And once your external users fill out the form, they get directly set, they get submitted to SharePoint directly via that email address. No need for admins to open the email, the form from their email account. Okay. Um, I'm not sure I understand your question, Gary. If I cannot be sure the email recipient has the InfoPath client, is my alternative to create a web for instead of using email forms? Would you like to uh, explain that further, please? Mel, I think what he's asking is if you don't know if your external user has the InfoPath client, because obviously if they don't have it, they can't open the form, is there an alternative to set that up? Instead of using email forms, can you use a, a, a web-based form? Mm -hmm. and then I actually, think he, he's talking about creating a web server. Yeah, he responded to, thanks Marcy. No problem. Um, Want to gather information from anonymous users. 
<laughs> not folks in our company. Mm, I am actually not sure if there are other alternatives aside from InfoBath because during this demo we've shown you InfoBath working together with Outlook and um, it actually is, um, they actually are are required, you know, in the first um, second slide of our PowerPoint presentation, we require InfoBath and we require Outlook. So I am not sure if there are other alternatives. I am willing to take a look at that, Gary, if, um, if Patrick tells me to. Uh, yeah. Questions? I guess while we're waiting for questions, I just wanted to say thanks to everybody for uh, your patience while we try out our new webinar platform. Um, and Mel, you sounded okay for most of it. There were a couple of delay, little delay issues here and there um, where the, the audio would kind of cut out slightly, but I think uh, all the content was still there. So again, apologies for um, as we work out all the kinks in this. Um, there should be, at the end of this webinar, a feedback form that you are presented with. So we would appreciate any feedback that you have for us. And if you send in your feedback form, we will send you, uh, I think, Mel, do you have samples for today to send out in the, the presentation? Do we have goodies? <laughs> Yay. And I also just wanted to quickly mention we do have an InfoPath Masterclass coming up uh, at the end of this month if you'd like more information on that. Um, it's, it's an online course and it starts on October 29th. It's a five-day, half, five-half-day course. So if you're interested, um, send an email to course manager at qdabber.com. And looks like there's some more questions. I'll pass it back to Mel. Yeah, I saw that briefly, but kind of lost the question window again. But oh, really, Robert, the same guy was asking about InfoBath 2012, working with SharePoint in 2010. I have, honestly, I don't have any clue about that. I haven't heard about InfoPath 2012 even. So I guess the best person to ask is the Microsoft MVP. That would be Patrick. Great, I hope everyone enjoyed this webinar. It's um, yet another learning curve for, I guess, all of us, especially me, having delivered a webinar for the first time. And thank you, everyone, for your patience. And hope to see you all again soon. Take care. <laughs>